Hello dear gamers, Yorkfield here and today we are back for the seventh episode on DDLC. So I am really sorry if I didn't really upload a lot of videos these days. I mean normal videos, I do upload some shorts, but I am really sorry if I didn't upload normal videos a lot of normal videos it's because uh, yeah i don't have a lot of videos in stock ready to be uploaded apart from road trip videos and other ddlc videos that are coming soon so yeah hopefully i should be more active since i am currently on a two-week holiday so yeah anyways too much talking let's go back in the literature club for the seventh time let's go it's already sunday I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert and also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt that she'll open up a little bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we've been texting occasionally. She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. But putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayuri since she left club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayuri said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayuri's feelings aside when she might need me? I decide to visit Sayuri before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her, I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom, where I finally find her. Sayori? Hi, Yorkfield. I sit down in her room. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Ah, I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is as messy as it's always been. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and the wall decorations that she's had for years now. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but wait, how did you know that? Sayori had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me, it's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Ah, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to, help, to be helping Monica today? Of course, but I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then? Yep, there's more silence between us. Sayori stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday. When something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So, Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Yorkfield. Eh? Why can't it be just... Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> Sayuri! I grabbed Sayuri by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Ah. Ah. Sayuri gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Yorkfield. But you're wrong. 
Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> You're really just going to make me say it, aren't you, Yorkfield? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me, I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me just to not think about her? Why, Sayori? Eh? Why is that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much I could do, I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little bit better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Yorkfield. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I want it so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone to be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club. It feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. <laughs> You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting. That's what I'll do. No, Yorkfield. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that you could have helped is everything could be like yeah, it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once again grab Sayori's shoulders. This time I pull her into a tight embrace. Oh, Yorkfield, Sayori, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please never under underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Yorkfield, Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No, don't do this to me. Please don't do this, Yorkfield. I... Sayori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you would have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what it needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything yet... And if there's anything that you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Sayuri finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Yorkfield. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm. And that's really scary too. Sayuri lets me go. As she does so, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? 
Um... Ah. It's what I want. I promise. I... I think that would be nice then. Yeah. Sayori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel... No, don't! Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Sayori shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Ah, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand. But I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright, I look forward to it. I say goodbye to Sayuri and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri is about to come over too. I think Sayuri is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. Not gonna lie guys, this almost made me feel broken, heartbroken. Okay. Hope I'm gonna be alright because I don't want a breakdown or anything like that related. So please write something good in the comments to cheer me up. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a little moment of panic. Yuri? Ah, thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a long time? No, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You always could have texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried more on my, home, on my way home. Ah, I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decided to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yep, pretty much. At least I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it will be fine. I take Yudi to my room. The first thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. Uh -huh. I cleaned it before you came over, so... That's very considerate of you to do. Uh, no. I would be really embarrassed for my room to be a mess while you were here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Ah, that will be even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there. I snatch Yudi's wrist, which was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Ah, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. She puts both of her hands firmly in her lap as if making sure she's keeping track of them. So, um, should we get started? Ah, yes. Um, I have a few things planned that you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements? You know, mood lighting, at aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. I didn't know you planned on taking it that far. Of course, I want to help take our guests to a faraway place. Although, many will stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easier to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Huh? Intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. I is that so? That makes me feel relieved. And kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be so anxious. You can't... You can relax a little. Relax? I brought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah, like what? Let's see. Yuri rummages through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder-shaped object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happen to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows back in black paper. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. I think that would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that would be really neat. What's that wooden thing, though? 
Oh, this? It's a diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you with aeroth aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Ah, is that so? It's one of my favorite contributors to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel it permit through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes the cylinder and pushes a switch on the bottom. In just a moment, a thin ray of vapor begins to spout through a small hole on the top. Wow, that smells wonderful! What kind of mood is that one for? This is a jasmine essential oil. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I chose jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them flowing through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. Do you think that will be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable, but you seem to know a lot about this, so I'll trust your opinion with anything. Yuri smiles gently, clearly enjoying herself. She again reaches into her bag and pulls several spools of thin ribbon. What are these for? Well, did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Yeah, I have it over here. We won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I'd like to do is write a different word on each paper. We need about a hundred of them. Oh yeah? What will those be used for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon to hang from the doorway of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper into the ribbons and to create a doorway certain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? It would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. May attract some to peek inside. That's really creative. I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. Is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you put it. Ooh, Yuri giggles with red cheeks. <laughs> is it just me? Or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Or maybe it's just the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Here's a marker, Yorkfield. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ruins. Ah, alright. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then she reaches into her bag once more and pulls a pocket knife. Huh? The knife is strangely beautiful. The civil handle has an intricate pattern of waves ancient to it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Uh, ugh. Well? Embarrassed, Yudi looks away. What is it? You're going to think it's weird. Yudi, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. To each their own, you know? If you promise, you won't be weirded out? Yeah, I promise. Alright. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. They're just so pretty. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> I don't know what it is. The combination of craft, craftsmanship and feeling of danger, maybe. Uh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. Uh, you're laughing at me? No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you got about sharing. It's, well, it's an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. <laughs> Besides, it's a really cool looking knife, I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes her, Yuri relaxes her expression once again. Y would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hands me the knife with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Curious of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ow! Yorkfield! Why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. It can cut skin like it's paper. <gasps> oh no! A small drop of blood tri trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Oh. She stares at it and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Ugh. Without warning, Yudi puts my finger in her mouth 
and licks the wand? What? I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Startled, I instinctively pull my hand back. Uh, oh, please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I... Yudi lowers her head, her face burning up. Yudi, that's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ah, sure, it was a little weird and took me by surprise. But I guess she was just trying to help, right? Yudi, I think you're overreacting a little. Uh, she doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover for, from this for the rest of the afternoon? Alright, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway. I take Yudi's hand and lick her index finger in return. <laughs> Why? Why do I do that? <laughs> Why did I do that? <laughs> Yorkfield! Did you just really do that? Now we even. Yudi just looks at me like I did something wrong. Ah, oh, I knew that would be a bad idea. If not for the sweet aroma of, ja of the jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Yorkfield. Yudi giggles shyly. Huh? Eh? Yudi calling me weird? I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Ah, I don't, I don't think I need one actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped bleeding. I see. That's relieving. The, tense, the tension is quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. I watch Yudi's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the paper. After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbon, we lay them all out side by side. It looks better than I expected and we will be very effective as a door certain. It looked great. Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. Ah, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. <coughs> Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I like to create a banner. That's why I ask you to buy the paint tablets. Ah, that's right. One of the items Yudi had asked me to buy was a kit of watercolor paint tablets. We'll need about six cups of water to put each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water? I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. If you fill the cups too much, it will be too diluted. Taking Yuri's advice, I decided to use the small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-size glasses. I put them on a plate to catch any paint that drips, then bring it back into my room. Yuri? Yes? I come in to see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve, pulling it back onto her over her arm. Ah, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Ah, no, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so let's mix the paint. Yuri? Hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cups. So, I thought we would do something simple that would look very nice. I'd like to paint a gradient across the banner, starting with the colors of for a sunrise, then daytime, then sunset, and nighttime. Once it dries, I'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang it on the wall behind the podium at the front of the classroom. Ah, Nate, what are you going to write? Well, it'll be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me, if you say so. After rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a brush and adds a few dots of different colors across the banner to serve as a color guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of an elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolors feels a lot like the art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. Ah, I'm sorry if it feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? <laughs> yeah, it is fun. I'm glad you feel that way too. Yuri stops painting for a moment, thinking to herself. For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things for, to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like when I can spend time with one other person. 
Even if it's something simple like reading, it doesn't even matter if we don't, don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes things feel a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yudi and I are quite different, I can understand where she is coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games where simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. I think I feel the same way. Yudi smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yudi learns over to Banner to grab an unused paintbrush, but I move at the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. <laughs> yeah! Sorry. Yudi reels back and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? N no, I'm not hurt. It's just... It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Ah, your face. There are droplets of paint on Yudi's face and neck. Is there something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I get a towel right away. I rush out and fetch a small towel, then I dampen it with hot water. I return to my room and kneel back in down in the front of her. Here. I pat down Yudi's face and neck it with the towel. Ah, oh, is something wrong? It's hot, I just didn't expect it. Sorry, I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand. But Yudi suddenly holds my wrist. Wait, eh? Just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Ah, I keep my hand still against Yudi's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. Almost as if she she's lost in a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through slightly part lips. What is happening? Is it the aroma of the jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Yudi's gentle fingers wrapped around my wrist send a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly, her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Ah, Yudi slowly pulls away. Sorry, I've been feeling a little tight-headed today. I didn't mean to space out. I it's fine. The moment is over as soon as it began. Yudi picks her brush again, but her movements seem clumsier, like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that I just transpired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yudi's example. That should do it. I finish filling the night sky with white dots and that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add the lettering now? Ah, uh, not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true, but I, well, that but won't take a, that a while. Well, perhaps it would be the best to leave it here, then have you bring it in the morning. I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Phew. <laughs> you say that you're glad it's over? Was I wrong to assume that you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Ah, no, it's not that. I'm just glad we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Ah, so you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoping we would dr I was secretly hoping we would have extra time after finishing the work. Hmm, sus. Well, Yudi thinks to herself. I think it will be too irresponsible of me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. No, it's not your fault at all. And the important thing is that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So, I, sh should I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all her things, Yudi seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. It sounded like she rarely gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. But that doesn't mean this is the last time it can happen. Once Yudi packs up, I walk her out of the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem, I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. 
Well then, you dear fidgets, I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, I can't have say that without thinking. About today, it's fine if we, it's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted, because we can do this again. Whenever you want, you can come over or we can go out somewhere. Ah, I forgot you don't like going this out much. As I stumble over my words, Yudi simply smiles bashfully. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, Yorkfield. Yudi takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. <gasps> oh my god, I got goosebumps. <laughs> I kind of... I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get a chance to, as Yudi suddenly pulls back. Sayuri! Eh? Ah! Hi, Yorkfield. Sayuri! Just now we weren't... <laughs> it's okay, Yorkfield. I just stopped by to say hi. Um... Well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Ah, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry. But we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so... So that's fine, right? Of course. Sayori beams. Yeah, so... I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off! <laughs> this is the second time that she rushes off! <laughs> Just because of Sayuri. If you remember last time when Yuri rushed off, it was because Sayuri was saying, Hey, Yuri's boobs are big and beautiful. And that was the part that made me laugh uncontrollably, if you remember. <laughs> so yeah, this is the second time that Yuri runs away just because of Sayuri. <laughs> Sayuri waves goodbye after her. Sayuri, I thought you didn't want to come over here today. Ah, oh, well, I tried staying in my room. But my imagination was being really mean to me, so I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yudi, and how close you got to her. It makes me really happy that you've made such good friends. That's all matters to me. Tears start to fall down Sayuri's face again. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Yorkfield? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sayori, don't say that. It's true, Yorkfield. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayori, what I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But... Sayori looks away. I put a hand I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Yorkfield. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that that I might like you more than you like me. Sayori? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Yorkfield? I like you so much that I want to die! That's how I feel! And that's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now, and that's what I'm going to give for you. Sayori I don't know what, what I can say here. I'm so close to drop tears, my dear gamers. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna save the game just in case. There we go. Uh, 
I love you. Eh? Those are my true feelings. So there's no way you could like me more than I like you. I should have realized it sooner. But spending time with everyone else at the club, making new friends, and having fun with you every day, it helped me realize that you're truly the most important person to me. That's why I'll accept any of your burdens. As long as we continue like this every day, with you by my side, then I know we'll both be happy. Yorkfield. Suddenly, Sayori wraps her arms tightly around me. Yorkfield, is this really okay? Yeah. I hold Sayori in my arms and pull her closer. Closer. You'll never have to let go of me again. I love you, Yorkfield. I want to be with you forever. Me too. I feel Sayori's grip around me weaken a little bit. What is this? Sayori? I'm supposed to be happy right now. I always thought this would be the happiest moment for me. But why? Even now? Why won't the rain clouds go away? They're not going away at all, Yorkfield. It's okay, Sayori. It might take some time for things to get better again. But no matter how long it takes, I'll be there every step of the way. That's all matters right now. Okay. I trust you. Sayori and I slowly release each other. So, I guess that makes the festival tomorrow our first date, huh? <laughs> what are you saying? I don't want to think about those things, you know. I want everything to be the same as it always has been, even if we really are a couple. I don't know if I could handle anything more right now. It's really new and scary to me. I understand. We'll go at whatever pace suits you best. Hey, Yorkfield! Sayori gazes at me once again, smiling sadly. Even if I get really, really sad, this is the best thing for me, right? Eh? I don't really understand what Sayori means by that. Are you saying this is that this is making you feel sad, Sayori? I don't know. I don't understand what I'm feeling. It felt like a bunch of thorns when you told me you love me. But that's why I want to trust you. You know what's best for me. Yeah, I do. That's my promise. I say that, but in reality, I've never felt more uncertain when it comes to Sayori. I know that I love her and she loves me, but I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the, the way they were. Is that what Sayori meant by not wanting anything to change? I don't know, but I know that I'll give everything I've got. Sayori is the most important person to me, and I'll do whatever it takes to have a happy future with her. Okay guys, this is the end of the part 7 of Doki Doki Literature Club. This was so far the saddest part, not gonna lie. I did laugh sometimes because there was funny things, but oh, there was a lot of sad dialogue and I was so close to dropping my tears. Not like in the thumbnail, but still, I was so close to crying guys. So please write something to cheer me up in the comments. Make sure you're subscribed or else you're gonna lose your waifu of your dreams. She's gonna hate you for good. So, Thanks for watching, stay safe, take care, peace, bye!